Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is going to do One Piece Episode 552 review. Now, this review, it should go by fairly quick. We'll see how it goes. But that being said, for this review, there's going to be five major points. The first point is going to be the capture of Shirahoshi and Jinbei, where, honest to God, they got, they got fooled on some kid shit. It was like a bunch of balloons and had Megalo and Shirahoshi kept their eyes open, they would have seen, wait a second, that's not my father. But of course, she's crying and she's like, yeah, and then my father failed. She completely failed. And Jinbei should have done something about that. Like, he should have done some fishing karate off the gate. But whatever. Okay, let it slide. And they got captured uh, in a net. And basically, they, they get taken to Horty Jones. Which brings up the next key point, which is Horty Jones and his assembly of one. 100,000 outlaws, which, by the way, was very impressive. I mean, the plaza starts to fill up. And basically what happens here is that um, we see that Horty Jones has been the princes. They are now somewhat crucified and chained on these uh, spear crosses alongside with their father, King Neptune. And then here comes Shirohoshi and Jinbei. And basically they get captured and thrown to the floor. And the thing is that Horty Jones, because he really wanted to kill Shirohoshi, because he knows about her power. He knows about her ability to, to control Sea Kings. And that obviously is a major threat. Because on a whim, she could control these Sea Kings to, like, destroy entire islands. So, and then he wants to kill her to get her out of the way. So he can continue his dominance over Fishman Island. And the thing is, he introduces his army. It, it really is an army. 100,000 outlaws. He has 30,000 human slaves and 70,000 outlaws from the Fishman district, thus making up his army of the new Fishman pirates. And it's it's a pretty impressive force right there. So, And you can see that Horty Jones has been planning this for a long time. And that being said, in the future episodes, you're going to see something insanely epic when it comes to these outlaws, okay? Like, there's going to be some crazy shit going on with there, right? Now... The next key point is going to be the reveal of Luffy to Horty Jones. What I mean by that is that Madam Shirley, she is also above the plaza watching this whole entire thing go down. And then she starts talking about how Horty Jones is not going to be the one to hold the island's destiny in his hands. That person is going to be Monkey D. Luffy. And she explains how she has had this, uh, this foretelling of Luffy and him destroying Fishman Island. Now, the thing is that her predictions are almost... Uh, actually, no, they are 100% accurate at all times. So people believe her off the gate because they know that she has a perfect prediction rate. And the thing is, Horty Jones, he is in denial of this. And thus, he decides to water shot her from, like, mad far. He was, like, mm, straight up water shot her and then, he was, and then she was taken out. But clearly, Monkey D. Luffy is going to be the centerpiece of this arc. At least when it comes to Fishman, so... Well, correction, when it comes to the destiny of the island, Monkey D. Luffy is the centerpiece. That's number three. Number four is going to be, number four is going to be, yeah, number four is going to be the reveal that Horty Jones was, in fact, the one who shot, who gunned down Queen Otohime. And sure, Hoshi knew about this. And basically what happened was that after he, after he took out Madam Shirley, He's telling everyone his plans. That uh, he was telling any, he was telling everyone the destiny of Fishman in general, and then he reveals that he was the one who killed Queen Otohime. And he had, and then we see the process about how he does this. We see him pay off a human to set to set fire to the signatures, and then we see how he used this human as some of a decoy, and then he shot through the fire, killed Otohime. And then we see him betray the human, gun down the human, then showcase his corpse to the entire plaza, telling them that this human, I killed your queen. And people believed him off the gate because he's a fisherman and the guy he's holding was a human. So who, so who are they going to believe? Their own kin or an outsider? And obviously they believe in Horty Jones. And, and Horty Jones used that to his advantage. And we see how the officers, they're laughing because it was kind of obvious. To them, it was kind of obvious. So... And Horty Jones had planned this entire thing out. And he's bragging about it. And he's bra he, he is like, yeah, I did it. Your queen, Odohima, was annoying. She deserved to die and all this stuff. And then Shirohoshi's like, I knew. And then everyone's like, what the hell? You know, like, so... And then, again, 
that's going to be explained much later. Well, that's actually no, that's going to be explained next week, actually. Yeah, next week is going to be explained in full as to the reason why she knows that Horty Jones had killed her mother. Um, and by the way, you can see the preview of One Piece episode 553 down below. There's going to be a link down below for that preview given to you by Everything One Piece. Uh, that's number four. And number five, which is, in my in my personal opinion, like one of the coolest things of this arc, Von Der Decker. He is finally going along with this plan. And we see him walk over to the Noah ship, takes off the glove, uses his double fruit. I, I, is it called the target target fruit or something of that nature? I'm not too sure what it's called. Um, or, or, or at least the actual Japanese name. But uh, something, something, no me, obviously. But the thing about it is that he touches Noah, and Noah starts to rise. And then he says that, I'm going to take out everyone involving Shirahoshi. She's going to get crushed by Noah. And she's always going to remain in my heart. And I was like, yo, that's some pretty twisted shit. And the thing about Noah is that we see how big Noah is. Noah topples over mountains. Noah is like... Half the, yeah, the, the guide says that it was half the size of the entire island. And it's like, what the hell? The chain itself is huge. The chains that surround Noah are, are ridiculously huge. Like, they're at least three times the sky, I mean, three times the size of an average skyscraper. And then there's the ship itself. And you're like, what the hell, you know? So, I mean, like, there's actually... In last week's episode, there's, there's actually a good size relation where we see Von Der Decker's galleon ship, which, and galleon ships are roughly around the size of skyscrapers, and we see it in comparison to Noah, and it's like a dot. It really is like a fucking dot, and it's like, what the hell, you know? So clearly, this ship is huge. And the way, because this ship actually has a lot of meaning for the overall story, and it's hinted upon here and there. But the full scope of this ship's importance has not been revealed just yet. So I, I like to see how this ship is relevant when it comes to future arcs. That being said, that's the episode right there for you. Uh, so this is the King of Lightning. Rate, comment, subscribe. Peace. Have a nice day.